This is MathHeals.com where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. And let's take a look at simplifying expressions using the law of exponents. First let's uh, refresh our memory on some of the um, properties. And some of these I'll introduce as we run across them. Now first one if we got x to a power times x to a power then you add the exponents. Now x can be anything so instead of have, having a variable here you could have 2 to the third times 2 to the fifth. Just as long as these are the same then you're going to add your exponents. And the exponents don't have to be nice integers or anything they can be fractions which we'll see. If we're taking x to a power and we're raising it to another power you're going to multiply the exponents. <coughs> now if you have uh, x to the 0 power, that's always equal to 1. No matter what, anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. 5 to the 0 is equal to 1. 7 to the 0 is equal to 1. x to the 0 is equal to 1. So forth. Now um, I'm actually going to put numbers here to represent this. Let's say you have a negative exponent. We have x to the negative 3. Well, we're going to move that up on top, and it'll become x to the positive 3. And then I'll put 1 as a placeholder in the other position. So when you got a negative exponent, how you get rid of it is you move it opposite of where it's at in a fraction, and sign the exponent changes. Now, if you just had, uh, like this right here, x to the negative 2. Well, in order to move it opposite where it's at in a fraction, you have to uh, write it in fraction form. So put over 1. And then I take the x and negative 2 downstairs, put it in the denominator. Again, when you got a negative exponent, you move it opposite where it's at in the fraction, and sign of the exponent changes. Now, this is one I sometimes will put into words, um, sometimes not. But since we, hopefully you've seen this before, we'll just kind of talk about it. Uh, there's a property that says if you got x to a power over x to a power, you subtract the exponents. And um, it's similar to the, these first two, but I, I never like to use it. It's a lot easier than, than how it's expressed in most books. If you got x to a power over x to a power, and the x can be anything. You can have 3 to a power over 3 to a power. But let's say we have x to the 7th over x to the 10th. What you do is you, over on the side, you subtract a smaller exponent from the larger one. Well, 10 minus 7 gives us 3. And you'll have x to the 3rd where your larger exponent was, which was down in the denominator. And then we put a placeholder of 1 there. So again, you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. 10 minus 7 is 3. And you're going to have x that power where the larger exponent was, which is downstairs. Now, um, let's say we have x over y to the negative 3 power. If you have a fractional fraction to a negative power, what you do is you flip the fraction and the sign of the exponent becomes positive. So again, you flip the fraction, take the reciprocal of it, and then you flip the sign of the exponent. Now I actually put some numbers in with those properties, because I think it just clicks better if you can see a number example than to see the M and N and all that. Let's look at our first problem. We've got 2 to the 1 fourth times 2 to the 11 fourths. Well, notice these are both the same, aren't they? They're both 2 to a power. So we're going to add the exponents. So we've got 2 to the 1 fourth plus 11 fourths. 1 fourth plus 11 fourths is 12 fourths, excuse me. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so we've got 2 to the third, which gives us 8. And that's our answer. Okay, here we got 5 to the 9 halves over 5 to the 5 halves. Well, remember what I said earlier, where we have x to a power over x to a power, you subtract smaller exponent from larger one? Let's do that. Uh, so we're going to, we got 5 to a power over 5 to a power, so we're going to subtract smaller exponent from larger one. 9 halves minus 5 halves is 4 halves. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
So we're going to have 5 to the second power where our larger exponent was, which was up on top. And then we'll have the, the placeholder over 1 down below. Well, 5 squared is 25. 25 over 1 is 25. Now what made these work so well is that they had the same denominator. So keep that in mind in some of the, some of the upcoming problems. Okay, and this one we got 5 to the negative 7 thirds times 5 to the 2 fifths. Now there's different ways you can solve these problems. Um, basically, uh, I like to get rid of uh, negative exponents first, and then, uh, if possible, follow my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the order of operations. Well, first thing I notice here is I got a negative exponent. Well, we know how to handle that. You take it opposite where it at, it's at in the fraction. So in order to do that, I've got to create a fraction. So I can put this over 1. And the part with a negative exponent, the 5 to the negative 7 thirds, I'm going to take that and move it down to the denominator. So we're going to have 5 to the 2 fifths over 5 to the 7 thirds. Now remember, when you move anything opposite in a fraction, the sign of the exponent changes. That's why it became a positive 7 thirds. Well... We said up above that the reason those uh, ones worked so nice is that the denominator of the exponents was the same. Well, here we got 5 and 3. They're different. So we want to get a common denominator of our exponents. Um, well, here we got 5, 3, so our common denominator would be 15. So I'm going to rewrite the top and bottom with the exponents with that denominator 15. Now, top part here, we multiplied the bottom part by 3, so top part by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So we got 5 to the 6 fifteenths. On the bottom one here, we multiply the bottom part by 5, so we have to multiply the top part by 5. 7 times 5 is 35. Well, over on the side, I'm going to subtract them. I got 35 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths, which gives us 29 fifteenths. And we're going to have 5 to the 29 fifteenths where our larger exponent was, which is on the bottom. And then I put a placeholder of 1 up there. Now, if we were going to put this back in radical form, we could simplify it a little bit more, but um, uh, they don't say anything about that, so that's our answer. Okay, let's look at this problem. We've got y to the 1 third over y to the 5 twelfths. Okay, well, we got y to a power over y to a power. We need the exponents to have the same denominator. Uh, common denominator would be 12. So on the top part here, y, y to the 1 third to 1 third, I multiply the bottom part by 4, so I have to multiply the top part by 4. 1 times 4 is 4, so we get y to the 4 twelfths over y to the 5 twelfths. Well, uh, we got y to a power over y to a power. Subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. 5 twelfths minus 4 twelfths gives us 1 twelfth. And we'll have y to the 1 twelfth where our lar larger exponent was, which was down in the denominator. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at this one. Got 16 to the 7 twelfths and raising it to the 6 sevenths power. Well, when you um, raise one, ex uh, one exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. So we're going to have 16 7 twelfths times 6 sevenths. And once you do that, we see the sevens are going to cancel, like that. And that gives us 16 to the 6 twelfths. And 6 twelfths reduces to 1 half. Top and bottom both divided by 1, or divided by 6. Sorry. So now we've got 16 and 1 half. I'll put this back in the radical form to simplify it. Now remember to put it back in radical form. Whatever number's up on top goes inside, like that. Whatever's your denominator goes in your little slot right there. That's called your index. Now if it's a 2, it's by default a square root. And 16, the first power is a 16.
And 16 is 4 times 4. And remember the square root, we're looking for a pair of something. So here's a pair of 4s. So a pair of 4 is going to come out in front as a single 4. And that's our answer. Okay, we've got 25 to the negative one-third times 5 to the eleven-thirds. The negative 2 power. Well, to begin with, please excuse me, my dear Aunt Sally says, do what's inside the parentheses first. I notice inside the parentheses I got a negative exponent. So I'm going to create a fraction. I'll throw this over 1. And the part of the negative exponent we're going to take down to the denominator. So it's 25 to the negative one-third. I'll take down there. Again, anytime you move anything opposite where it's at in the fraction, the sign of the exponent changes. So we've got 5 to the 11 thirds over 25 to the 1 third, all of it to the negative 2 power. Check and make sure it really is 1 third. Okay. Well, before we said that we had to have 5 to a power over 5 to a power. We don't have that. But I can rewrite this. Here I got 5 to the 11 thirds, and I can rewrite the 25 as 5 squared. So then we got 5 to the 11 thirds over. Now I'm raising this 2 to the 1 third power. When you're raising one exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. 2 times 1 third gives us 2 thirds. Now we're still doing what's inside of the parentheses. Still not done with that yet. We got 5 to a power over 5 to a power. You subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So we got 11 thirds minus 2 thirds. That gives us 9 thirds. 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. So we're going to have 5 to the third where the larger exponent was, which was up on top. And I'll put a placeholder of 1 down there. Now we had a property, well actually we're still doing what's inside the parentheses, but um, it probably isn't a whole lot of benefit to go ahead and take 5 to the third power yet. Um, but we had a property set if you have a fraction to a negative power, you flip the fraction, so this becomes 1 over 5 to the third raised to the positive 2. So again, flip the fraction, change the sign of the exponent. Now if everything inside, and I didn't write this property down, I like to show with example, if everything inside is multiplication or division, and you're raising it to a power, then you can take everything to that power. So we're going to take the 1 to the second power, and we'll take the 5 to the third to the second power. 1 squared is 1. Um, 5 to the third to the second power, you're raising an exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. 3 times 2 gives you 6. And let me get my calculator. Fifteen thousand six hundred twenty-five. Six hundred and twenty-five. Assuming I had to make a basic math error somewhere. I'm kind of good about those sometimes. Okay, let's look at this next problem. And actually, I may um, start a new page here. Okay, so we've got a to the 5 halves times, oops, b to the negative 1 third times a to the negative 3 times b to the 10 thirds. Now I could dive right in and uh, handle it. Um, multiply the a's together times the b's together and uh, add the exponents and go from there, and that would probably be the easiest way. Uh, I'm not going to do it the easiest way, as weird as that seems. Uh, I'm a, I try to follow my dear Aunt Sally on these, my order of operations, because that tells a, a student that there's one way that works all the time, even if it's a couple extra steps. Uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, do what's inside the parentheses first. Well, inside the parentheses, I see i got negative exponents. So I'll create a fraction by putting these both over 1. And the part of the negative exponent I'll take down to the denominator. So this b to the negative one third take downstairs. And this a to the negative three I'll take down to the denominator. So this becomes a to the five halves 
over b to the one-third times b to the ten-thirds over a to the positive three. Well, there's nothing left to do inside of each parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these across. I could do some simplifying first, but I'll go ahead and multiply across. So I got a to the five-halves, b to the ten-thirds, over b to the one-third, a to the three over one. Now we have a to a power over a to a power. We have b to a power over b to a power. In order to simplify these, I want them to have the same denominator. Well, the b's are okay. Here's 10 to the third. Here's 1 to the third. But the a's, I need to have the same denominator, which would be a common denominator of 2. So I got a to the 5 halves, b to the 10 thirds. Down here, b to the 1 third, a. Now I need a common denominator of 2, so I multiply the bottom part by 2, so I have to multiply the top part by 2. So that gives me 6 over 2. Okay, let's start with our a's. Subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So I got 6 halves minus 5 halves, which gives us 1 half. So I'm going to have a to the 1 half where my larger exponent was, which was down in the denominator. Now my b's. I got uh, 10 thirds minus 1 third. Subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. 10, 10 thirds minus 1 third is 9 thirds. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we're going to have b to the third where the larger exponent was, which was up on top. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at this one. Let me grab a drink here. Thirty six M to the one fourth N over M to the negative three N to the eight fifths. All of it raised to one half. Okay. A lot of different things going on, but uh, my order of operation says do what's inside the parentheses first. Well, with inside the parentheses, um, we want to do what's um, uh, with our fraction. We want to do what's on top, separate from what's on the bottom. Well, the only thing in the jumps right out of me is I got a negative exponent. Don't want that. So I take this a m to the negative three and move it upstairs. So we're going to get thirty-six m to the one fourth m to the positive 3 n to the first over n to the 8 fifths all to the 1 half power. Well up on top um, I got m to a power times m to a power so I'll add the exponents I got 1 fourth plus 3 this is a mixed number I can take 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13 so this gives us 13 fourths so we're going to have 36 m to the 13 fourths n to the now I want that to have the same denominator as the n down down in the denominator. Um, I want to have the same denominator in the exponents. Um, so well this is n to the 8 fifths. So uh, I'll rewrite the 1 as 5 over 5. Okay, so we got 36 m to the 13 fourths over. Now we have uh, n to a power over n to a power. Subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So we got 8 fifths minus 5 fifths. And that gives us 3 fifths. And we'll have n to the 3 fifths where a larger exponent was, which is downstairs. Now there's nothing left to do inside the parentheses. Um, nothing to combine together, you know, so forth. Uh, so I go to the outer exponent, the one half. If everything inside your parentheses is multiplication and division, and you're raising it to a power, you can take everything to that power. So we're going to take the 36 to the one half power. We'll take the m to the 13 fourths to the one half power. And we'll take the n to the 3 fifths to the one half power. Now 36 to 1 half power, I can put that back in a radical form, that's square root of 36. And uh, this becomes m, and you're raising one exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. 13 times 1 is 13, 4 times 2 is 8, 
So I get 13 eighths. From my bottom one here, multiply the exponents. Uh, 3 times 1, 5 times 2. I get n to the 3 tenths. Now square root of 36, uh, square root of 36, if I write it over here, 6, uh, six times 6 gives you 36. And square root, we're looking for a pair of something, so there's a pair of 6's, so that's going to come out. So this becomes 6m to the 13 eighths over n to the 3 tenths. And that's our answer. Okay, I'm going to start a new page. Let's look at number 9. Got 12th root of 25 to the 6. And it says use rational exponents to simplify each radical. Assume all variables are positive. I'm going to rewrite this as 25 to the 6 twelfths power. Whatever power is inside here, if there is one, goes up on top. If there isn't one, then you put 1. Whatever's in your index, and that slot there goes down your denominator. If there isn't a number right here, it's by default 2, a square root. Well, uh, 6 twelfths reduces. 6 uh, divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, so it becomes 12 to the 1 half. Now I'll put it back in a radical form, going the other direction. And again, uh, whatever number's on top goes right here, and whatever in number's in your denominator is your index. Now the 2 is, means just square root, and 25 of the first is 25. 25 is 5 times 5. Square root, we're looking for a pair of numbers, so our answer will be 5. Hmm. Square root of 36 x to the 10th, y to the 18th. Though there's other ways of simplifying this, uh, they want us to use rational exponents to simplify each radical. Now when they say that, they don't mean it for the number. We already said square root of 36 uh, somewhere is 6. Um, but let me write it just so you see it. 6 times 6 times x to the 10th, y to the 18th. Square root, we're looking for a pair of numbers. Here's a pair of 6's, or a pair of somethings I should say. So that 6 comes out. Now what's left? I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 10th, y to the 18th, all to the 1 half power. Whenever you see the square root, that's always the 1 half power. Now remember what I said earlier. If everything um, inside your parentheses is either multiplication or division, and you're raising it to a power, you take everything to that power. So we're going to take the x to the 10th to the 1 half power, and we'll take the y to the 18th to the 1 half power. Well, when you're raising one exponent to another exponent, you multiply them. So we're going to have uh, 6x to the 10 times a half, y to the 18 times a half. 10 times a half is 6, or 5, sorry. So we've got 6x to the 5th, y, 18 times a half is 9. So that'd be our answer. 6x to the 5th, y to the 9th. Let's take a look at this one. Got the cube root of y to the fifth over the cube root or fifth root of y. I'll grab a drink here. So the instructions are the same, says use rational exponents to simplify these. So let me put it back in the rational exponent form, fractional power form. This would become five to the or y to the five thirds over y to the one fifth. We've already talked about these before. In order to work these problems simply, the the exponents have to have the same denominator. Well, here I got three and here I got five, so it'd be fifteen. My top one I multiply the bottom part by five, so I have to multiply the top part by five. Five times five is twenty five. On our bottom one, we multiply the bottom part by 3, so we have to multiply the top part by 3. So that gives us 3 fifteenths. Well, now we have 
uh, y to a power over y to a power. Subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. 25 15 minus 3 15 gives us 22 15 and we'll have y to the 22 15 where our larger exponent was, which was up on top. And then a placeholder of 1 there. So our answer is y to the 22 15 That 1 drops away. Okay, let me start a new page. We've got the fifth root. Uh, the square root of x to fifth. It says use rational exponents again. So this we're going to rewrite as x to the five halves. Now remember the power that's right here goes up on top in your numerator. Whatever's in the slot, which is this is square root, there's no number here. It's by default two goes in your denominator. And now we're going to have x to the five halves raised to the one fifth power. Again, whatever your index is goes in your denominator, and then you put a 1 up here. Now after we get in that form, you see the 5 is going to cancel, and we've got x to the 1 half, which put in the back, back in radical form would be the square root of x. So that one kind of simplifies uh, pretty nice. Let's look at this one. Got the cube root of 7 times the seventh root of 49. And it says use rational exponents again, so we'll start there. We're going to rewrite each one of these with rational exponents, fractional powers, so this will be 7 to the 1 third times 49 to the 1 seventh. Well, we know to multiply these together, these both have to be 7 to a power, which works out nice because 49 I can rewrite as 7 squared. So we've got 7 to 1 third times 7, and we're raising one exponent to another exponent. 2 times 1 seventh gives us 2 sevenths. Now we know the next thing that we need is we need for the, uh, the exponents to have the same denominator. Well, this is 3 and this is 7, so a common denominator would be 21. Now my first one here multiplied by 7, so I have to multiply my top part by 7. 1 times 7 is 7, so we've got 7 to the 7 21st times 7. And our second one here, we multiply the bottom part by 3, so we multiply the top part by 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so we got 6 21st. So then now we got 7 to a power times 7 to a power. We'll add the exponents. 7 21st plus 6 21st is 13 21st. And that's our answer. I don't think they'll put that back in the radical form yet. We'll grab a drink here. Got 5x to the 3 halves plus 2x to the 1 half times 3x minus 5. Now, um, this is considered one group because we've got 5 times this, and this is considered one group because we've got 2 times this times this. Everything's multiplication. Now, it tells us to factor out an x to the 1 half. The reason why we do that is because think about a simple factoring like this. Now we want to factor out GCF, we'd factor out an x squared. We factor out the one with the smallest exponent. Well here we got x to three halves, here we got x to one half. So x to one half is our smallest exponent. Now think what we did here. We factor out an x squared, that leaves us x to the third. You subtract the exponents. Five minus two gives you three. Do the same thing here. We got x to the one three halves, we're factoring out x to one half. So I subtract the exponents. 3 halves minus 1 half gives us 2 halves. So we're going to have x to the 2 halves. Plus 2, and that's gone now. And then we're left with 3x minus 5. Excuse me. So, well, 2 over 2 is 1, so this becomes 5x. Plus 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 5x plus 6x gives us 11x minus 10. And that's our answer. Let me uh, start a new page. And then we'll look at this last one. Okay. 
Okay. So we've got 2x plus 3 to the 1 half, 5x plus 2, plus 9 times x plus 3 to the 4 thirds power. Boy, my eyes are bad. That's not 1 half, that's 1 third. Okay, then we want to factor out an x plus 3. I'm kind of tired. x plus 3 to the 1 third. Well, first off, this is considered one group right here, and this is considered one group. The reason I know that is because this is 2 times this times this. This is 9 times this. So everything's multiplication inside there. Now we want to factor out the x plus 3 to the 1 third. So that's gone there. So we're left with 2 times 5x plus 2 plus 9 times x plus 3. Now um, subtract the exponents. 4 thirds minus 1 third gives us 3 thirds. So then we've got x plus 3 to the 1 third. 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 over 3 is 1. Um, so 9 times x is 9x. 9 times 3 is 27. Which gives us x plus 3 to the 1 third. 10x plus 9x is 19x. 4 plus 27 is 31. And that'd be our answer. And I believe that's the end of the video. Yep.